Good evening and welcome to the foyer of Christ Community Fellowship Church. I'm so glad that you are joining us tonight for this um, teaching, this lesson that I have for you. I think that you will um, be blessed and it will cause you to grow in your relationship with the Lord. Um, let's start with prayer. Father God, we just thank you for the, this evening. We thank you for this time that we can share together. We know that all things in you are yes and amen. That, Father, we're going to grow as we learn more about you and the things that you have for us. I just bless each one li listening tonight. I bless their homes, their communities, their states. I bless the United States of America. I bless the countries around the world, Father. And I thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. The title to this message tonight is Get Ready, Get Ready, Get Ready. And this is one that you may remember the catchy title, but it will mean something to you. And I think that um, you're going to become as excited as I was, as I was um, studying and, and digging into the Word and, and my time in prayer and meditation with the Lord. So I, wanted, um, I want to take you to the book of Matthew, chapter 25. And this is a familiar um, parable that we have all um, heard. Sometimes when we hear these parables, we don't really hear all of it. We think we know it, and so we kind of skip over it. But I'm reading to you in the Passion Translation, which has a little different meaning um, with the words, and, and it opens and enlightens um, you to, to look deeper at the story. And it's a parable of the ten virgins. At the time my coming draws near, heaven's kingdom realm can be compared to ten maidens who took their oil lamps and went outside to meet the bridegroom and his bride. Five of them were foolish and ill-prepared, for they took no extra oil for their lamps. Five of them were wise and sensible, for they took flask of olive oil with them for their lamps. When the bridegroom didn't come, when they expected, they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. Then suddenly, in the middle of the night, they were awakened by the shout, Get up! The bridegroom is here! Come out and have an encounter with him! Come out! So all of the girls got up and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish ones were running out of oil. So they said to the five wise ones, share your oil with us because our lamps are going out. We can't, they replied. We don't have enough for all of us. You have to go and buy some for yourselves. While the five girls were out buying oil, the bridegroom appeared. Those that were ready and waiting were escorted inside with him and the wedding party to enjoy the feast. And then the door was locked. Later, the five foolish girls came running up to the door and pleaded, Lord, Lord, let us in. But he called back, go away. Do I know you? I can assure you, I don't even know you. That is the reason you should always stay awake and be alert because you don't know the day or the hour when the bridegroom will come. You know, this, um, this parable has many different um, aspects to it, but we're going to talk about two of them tonight. The first one we're going to talk about is the oil, um, the having the oil. The oil in the Bible represents the Holy Spirit. The presence of God is the Holy Spirit. And that's what is, when they talk about the oil in the Bible, that's what it means. You'll find in different scripture talking about the oil of joy, and that's the presence of the Lord and in joy that as He encounters us, we receive that joy. It's passed through us. But his oil always signifies 
something supernatural, not something as the parable, if you took it literally, that you could go to the store and buy it, but something that must be developed in our life. And as the, the parable tells us that there were 10 virgins, only five were wise, but five were foolish. So let's talk about the five wise virgins and um, what they did to prepare themselves for the bridegroom. The only way to obtain the oil of his presence is to spend time with the Lord. And it is the, it is the oil that we fill our lamps with. And remember, not only was their lamps filled, but that they had a separate jar of oil. So these women had spent a great deal of time in the presence of God. They had probably been worshiping. They had been praising. They had been reading the scripture. They had been praying to him. They had been just lifting him up in prayer, but spending time with him. You see, today, our time is the most precious thing that we have to give. But too many people, as the wise virgins did, found out too late that they couldn't buy his presence. And his presence is not transferable from one to another. It is what you do to receive his presence it determines the amount of supply that you have for your life. You know, there are people who go through tragedies and traumas and you wonder how can they be so strong? You know, how can they look through eyes of faith, believing and knowing that everything is going to be okay? I mean, we all know that. We all read the Word and we know, you know, that God's going to be with us. He'll never leave us or forsake us. But there are just those people who seem to have a quiet confidence in the middle of the storm. Well, I tell you, those are the people that have their oil lamps filled and they have their jars filled. Because when you come upon opposition or trials or tribulations, you draw on that source of strength and it comes only from His presence. And His presence is what you have for your oil. Amen. I have a few other scriptures I want to give you that talk about another benefit of this oil. So we're going to go to Psalms chapter 119 verse 105. You know, and the Holy Spirit has many different um, descriptions of Him. One of them is a, is a spirit of truth and the spirit of light. And I'm reading from the Passion Translation. Truth's shining light guides me in my choices and decisions. The revelation of your word makes my pathway clear. The shining light of truth, the illumination of our path, which way we should go, comes from the Holy Spirit. That's all, all part of His presence, that as we remain vigilant to, um, to wait on Him and to, to love Him and to worship and to praise Him and spend time with Him and develop that relationship, our oil supply grows. And because our oil supply is growing, we're going to have instruction as to our pathway to be sure that we are on the right path that, for the journey that God has designed for each one of us. The second verse I have comes from Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. And this is also in the Passion Translation. For truth is a bright beam of light shining into every area of your life, instructing and correcting you to discover the ways to godly living. We all need that instruction. 
We all need the convicting power of the Holy Spirit in our life to show us where we're missing it. It may be something as simple as cutting down on your Facebook time and taking that time to spend more time with Him in prayer or in reading and meditating on your Word. Or it may be going and, and visiting a neighbor or, you know, just taking that time that we may have been truly wasting um, and using it to benefit God. You know, God, the Spirit convicts us. It does not condemn us. Condemnation is from Satan, from the enemy, from the devil, whatever you call him. God will never condemn you. He does convict us, and that brings correction. But the Bible tells us because He's a loving Father, He wants us to do what is best for us. And this verse tells us that His light shines in every area of our life. Remember the, the message last week about the, the mask and the disguises that we hide from other people. Well, you know, God knows everything about us. His light has already shone in and through us. It, it knows the good, the bad, and the ugly. And He still loves us. But He loves us enough to want us to receive everything He has for us. And so He'll bring that convicting spirit that will not only teach us, it'll bless us because we know that He loves us or He wouldn't do that in, for our life. The last scripture verse that I have for you also comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 27. And this is also from the Passion Translation. The Spirit of God breathed into man is a living lamp, a shining light, searching into the innermost chambers of our being. A shining light inside of us. And what happens to that light? The light is seen by others. When the Spirit of God that He breathed inside of our bodies dwells in us, and when we have been careful to mind our fuel, to mind our oil, to be sure that our lamps were filled, then that light is what shines through us and makes us attractive to others. Not who we are, but who God is in us. Now, how's the world going to know? Some of them will never hear a message preached in words, but they'll look at your life to see the Word of God lived out day by day in good times and in bad times. If your oil reserve is really low, those bad times are not going to show His light through too much through them. But if your oil lamp is filled, then you're going to shine brightly regardless of what you're facing in your life. Amen? Okay, the second part to this parable talks about the trimming of wicks. And I researched this, and it was very interesting to me because, you know, as I read this parable time and time again, I never really thought about the meaning of the trimming of the wicks. But it's very important because without first the trimming of the wicks, before the light is lit, then um, it gives a whole different story to your light shining. In the natural, um, in a candle, and I read, you trim your wicks to within one eighth of an inch. But let me explain to you what a wick is and what a wick does. A wick um, comes, is the, um, it draws the oil, or in this case, the candle, um, up through the wick so it can be lit. In an oil lamp, it comes from a storage reservoir. And at the bottom, it has a glass globe. I don't, I have one, but I don't really know where it was at. I couldn't put my hands on it to bring it, so I just brought a candle. But it draws, that wick 
is made of a material and it draws the, the oil up to the top of the lamp and the, and the wick stands up there through this little, um, this little hole that comes up through there and that is what you light. Okay, but I learned that, and I, and I remember my grandmother telling me this years and years ago, if your wick is too long, your lamp will smoke. If your wick is too long, your lamp will smoke. So as I was reading this proverb, I noticed that the wise virgins trimmed their wick before they went out to meet the bridegroom. Before. So I asked the Lord, you know, what does this mean? Um, what are we talking about before? And so this is what um, I read. If a wick is too long, it provides a dull and smoky flame. But if a wick is trimmed correctly, it will provide a flame that is clear and bright. There's a difference in how you take care of your wick. I believe that the wicks represent our life and the way that we live it. You know, we all have choices. And as I was reading and meditating on this, I felt the, the leading of the Lord for me to do some trimming of the wick in my life. You know, there are things that we do that actually are not the best choices, like spending a long time on social media or, um, you know, playing games or watching television. And so there, I have been trimming my wick over the last few months cutting things out that took away from my time with him because I didn't know that's what I was doing, but that's what I felt led to do. I want my time to be spent in a way that honors God and in a way that benefits him and whoever he wants me to show his love to. You know, if we're too busy, sometimes even you can be busy even in church doing too much, not taking that time yourself to spend with Him. You may trim your wick, but you may not have much oil in your lamp. It takes that time with the Lord to put that oil in your lamp. So tonight, I have my little wick trimmers here and I brought my candle and I intentionally did not trim these wicks from the last time I burned it and I'm cutting these wicks as directed amen I to me this symbolized cutting everything off that the Lord wants me to cut off amen I know that for me, um, sports season's coming up, and to a lot of households, it's almost like a god, unfortunately. But don't let a sports game take away from your time with God. Now, that may anger some of you, but it's the truth. God should always come first. So I have my candle trimmed, and I'm going to light it. And we have all had candles, and sometimes they get that smoky area around the glass when we light them. But you'll notice this candle is burning bright and it's burning clear. There's no smoke coming from it that would indicate that the wick was too long when I lit it, but it's burning bright and clear. I, I remember the, 
the parable that we are to to live as lights and not to allow anyone to put a, a bushel basket over us, that we should always let our light shine. And that's the way that it is with, our, with all of our lives today. The kingdom of God, we have to be His light. We have to represent Him well. And we have to keep our lamps filled. Not only filled, I want to be like the wise virgin. I want to have that extra jar of oil filled. So when the next thing comes up, I'll be able to stand in faith in knowing that my strength comes from the Lord because I've spent that time with Him. My relationship has, is built with the time that I spend with the Lord every day. If you're not spending time with the Lord, I would ask that, that you pray tonight that He leads you into that time. We all have time. We all have 24 hours a day. It's just what you spend with it. If you have children or don't have children, if you work or don't work, we all have the same amount of time. But we have to learn to make wise choices because we want to be the very best sons and daughters that God has. And keeping that relationship with Him alive and, and burning and, and just thriving is not only seen by Him, but it's seen through others. Amen. The last thing that He told me and I thought this was so precious, that God's favorite time of the day is the time that you spend with Him. You know, we, as parents, we always love when our children, you know, want to come and sit in our lap and, and tell us about their day and, and, you know, just love on us and allow us to love on them. Well, you know, our, our Abba Daddy is the same way. He wants us to come to Him and crawl up in His lap and love on Him. And that strengthens the bond that we have with Him. So you can just imagine, yes, that is His favorite time of day. And it doesn't matter if you only have 15 or 20 minutes to spend with Him that time will be well spent. He desires more. But don't think because you don't have hours a day to spend with Him, then it's not worth taking that time to, to build that oil supply in your lamp up or to trim that wick. Know that all the time you spent with Him matters time in prayer, time just sitting still before Him and allowing Him to speak to you. He has things to say to you that will bless you, that will strengthen you, that maybe will even answer questions that you have had in your heart, things that nobody else knows about. He knows you intimately. Remember those verses in Proverbs said that He is the light that shines inside of you. He knows everything about you. And He still loves you and still desires that you come to Him. Not all cleaned up and not all fixed up and, you know, because you've set aside three hours to spend with Him. That's not what He wants. He wants you to come to Him as a child comes to a daddy to a parent and just crawl up on his lap and say, Daddy, I love you. Thank you for loving me. What can I do for you today? How can I bless you? Can I sing a song for you? Let me just love on you for a while. That builds the oil supply in your lamp. Your relationship with him is what it's all about can't buy it. You can't get it from someone else. It has to come from you. We all hear from God. 
you may not think that you do, but He speaks to us in different ways. He can put that sweet, still voice in your heart. You may not hear it audibly, but you have a feeling and it comes from Him. It can be in a thought. It can be in a whisper. It can be in um, when you're having something going on. He can bring a butterfly, beautiful butterfly, and put it right in front of you. He delights in doing things that shows His love for us. We just have to trim our wicks and slow down and look around us and listen to hear that still small voice and to see that blessing that he put in your life. That's what we need, all of us. There's none of us that have obtained anything in this life. There's nothing to obtain that's greater than your relationship with the Lord. It is the, the most important thing before your relationship with anybody else. He comes first. Let me encourage you to take that time. Tonight, ask the Lord to help you set aside that time to be with Him, to have that time to meditate and, and soak in His Word, to have that time to just crawl in His lap and love Him, and He'll show you because He'll honor that prayer. He'll honor that request. Father God, I thank you so much for your love for us. It is never ending. It is all consuming. It is always forgiving and always uplifting. That you want the very best for all of your sons and daughters, just as us as parents want for our own, but even greater. And Father, we thank you that you wait for us that you desire that relationship with us so greatly that you're waiting for us to come to you, that you anticipate that time that we're going to share with you, that you're just there waiting like I'm here, child. Come, come to me. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for accepting us and we thank you for your light of truth through your Holy Spirit that shines through us and, and reveals darkness and things in our life that need to change. Not because you require it, but because you desire for us to have more of you. We thank you for loving us, for forgiving us, for blessing us with all spiritual blessing. We thank you for drawing us closer to you by your Holy Spirit so that we can grow in our relationship. I just bless each one listening tonight. I thank you, Father, that they will feel no condemnation, but they'll feel a desire, a deep burning desire inside of them to develop and grow their relationship with you. That if nothing else remains in their mind or their heart after this lesson, that they're just going to have that desire just burning inside of them. And it will not be fulfilled until they step towards you. I thank you that your love for us is so great and so wonderful that we don't even understand it. But it's there. It's your free gift that you give to all of your sons and daughters. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. I hope that tonight is a new beginning for each one of you, as it was for me in my study time and in my preparation time for this message. I always want to be trimmed. I want to keep my wick trimmed, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, how and where and when He is moving, and to be able to keep not only my vessel full, but another jar, or another jar, or another jar, multiple jars filled. Because His presence is the most precious thing that we can have. 
God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. God loves you, and so do I. Amen. Good night.